Hello students, so we're going to go ahead and look at some examples from section 6.2. So this is problem number one in the homework, and it says use the given confidence interval to find the margin of error and the sample mean. Okay, and this is our confidence interval, so from 14.4 to 21.8. So 14.4 is the lower limit of the confidence interval, and then 21.8 is the upper limit. Okay, and the first part is asking for the sample mean. So the sample mean is the midpoint of the interval. So to get the midpoint, you add the lower and upper limits of the interval together, and then divide by 2 to get the sample mean. Okay, so once again, the interval is from 14.4. Twenty-one point eight. Okay, so to get the sample mean x bar, we're going to do fourteen point four plus 21.8 and then divide the total by 2 and we can do that on our calculator so 14.4 plus 21.8 okay so the total is 36.2 and then divide that by 2 all right we end up with 18.1 Okay, so the sample mean was equal to 18.1. So the sample mean is always the midpoint of the confidence interval. Okay, so then it's going to ask for the margin of error next. Okay, so to get the margin of error... Okay, it is equal to the positive difference between the upper and lower limits of the confidence interval divided by 2. Okay. So the letter E represents the margin of error, and the upper limit is 21.8. Alright, we're going to subtract from it the lower limit of 14.4, and we're going to divide that difference by 2. And let's use the calculator, so 21.8 minus 14.4, enter, and then divide that by 2. Okay, so the margin of error is always positive, okay, regardless of whether the endpoints of the interval are positive or negative, or if one is negative or the other one is positive. Okay, so the margin of error should always be positive. So that's why you take the upper limit and then subtract from that the lower limit. So that way the difference is positive and then you divide the difference by 2. And according to the calculator, uh, the margin of error was 3.7. And that's how you do question number 1. And question number 2 is very similar. It's going to ask you for the same things, the sample mean and the margin of error. But in this case, the confidence interval limits are going to be different than they were in problem one. So before we move on to the next example, I do want to mention that it's important that even for a simple problem like this, right, you, you put the, the calculation into your calculator correctly. So what I mean by that is, like, for example, if, if you're calculating the the sample mean from a confidence interval like we did like we just did in this example so let's just say for example you typed in 14.4 plus 21.8 all right and then you hit the divide button and then hit the number two it's not going to give you the correct answer right so what your calculator thinks you're doing is is you're taking 14.4 and then adding to it 21.8 divided by two Okay, so remember, most scientific calculators right, follow the or order of operations. So if you, if you enter the calculation in this way, 
okay, the calculator will think you're only, only dividing the 21.8 by 2 and then adding the 14.4 because that's what you do with the order of operations, right? You would divide before adding or subtracting, okay? So to kind of get around that, right, you would put the 14.4 plus 21.8 in parentheses, right? And close that in parentheses and then divide by the 2. Or you can do what we did when we did the example, right? Calculate the total first. Okay, so add the lower limit to the upper limit. Okay, press enter or equals. All right, and then divide the result by two. All right, and it's the same thing with with calculating the margin of error, right? If you, if you try to type it in as 21.8 minus 14.4, divided by two. Okay, once again, your calculator is gonna follow the order of operations. It's, it's gonna think that you're only dividing the 14.4 by two and not, and not the entire difference. Right, so it'll, it'll divide by two first and then and then do 21.8 minus whatever this is. Okay, so obviously that's, that's incorrect. So, so be extra careful when you do these calculations on your calculator. All right, so one last thing. Um, so you can actually draw a picture of this confidence interval. All right, so you can think of it think of it as a section on a number line. All right, so your confidence interval goes from 14.4 all the way up to 21.8. Okay, so the, the sample mean would be the midpoint of the interval. So this would be the sample mean, okay, which is 18.1. Okay, and the margin of error Okay, it's actually half of the difference between the the upper limit and the lower limit. So from, from one, one end point of the interval to, to the midpoint is called the margin of error. So this distance from 14.4 to 18.1 is a distance of 3.7, okay, which is equal to the margin of error. So likewise, from the midpoint, midpoint to the other end point is also equal to the margin of error. So that's why when we find the margin of error, right, we take the upper limit, subtract the lower limit, and then divide that by two to get, get that distance. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at the next example. So this is problem number three. And it says, in a random sample of 22 people, the mean, the mean commute time to work was 32.4 minutes, and the standard deviation was 7.2 minutes. Assume the population is normally distributed, and use a t-distribution to construct an 80% confidence interval for the population mean mu. And the question is, what is the margin of error? And then interpret the results. So it's important to know that before you construct any confidence interval, whether the confidence interval is for the mean of a population, the proportion of a population, or even the standard deviation of the population, right? the data must, must meet certain requirements. So for example, since we're doing a confidence interval for the population mean, in this case, which represents the commute times uh, of everybody in the population, so the, the commute times to work for everybody in the population. Okay, it's important to know that uh, for the types of confidence intervals that we do in this section, right, uh, we assume that the standard, standard deviation of the population is not known, okay? And that the sample is a random sample. Okay, and that either the population is normally distributed, okay, or your sample size n is greater than or equal to 30. Okay, so th those are the um, requirements. Um, otherwise, the method that we use to do the confidence inter interval won't necessarily work, okay, if either one of these requirements are not met. Okay, so for, for, the, for the purposes of um, illustration, right, we'll, we'll assume that Okay, we don't know the standard deviation. Okay, I think it says that in the problem. Okay, uh, we have a random sample. It does say that as well. Um, and we, we don't and we don't know the standard deviation of the population. Okay, and we're assuming that the population of cute commute times is also normally distributed. Okay, so we're not going to use any, any of the formulas to um, calculate the confidence interval, we're actually going to do that in stat crunch. Okay, so you know, if you're, if you're following along, right, go ahead and open stat crunch. Okay, 
So we know our sample size is 22 people. Okay, the sample mean was 32.4. So yeah, we can actually write this down. So, so this is problem three. Okay, the sample mean was 32.4. So for the 22 people that were randomly selected from the population, okay, their, their mean or average commute time to work was 32.4. So X bar is equal to 32.4 minutes. Okay, and lastly, the standard deviation of those commute times okay, within that sample was 7.2 minutes. All right, and we want an 80% confidence interval. Okay, for, all right, the mean commute times. Okay, to work for the entire population. Okay, so we're gonna enter this information um, into the appropriate function in StackCrunch. Okay, so we're gonna to go to stat. And because we're dealing with the t distribution uh, in the section, right? We're going to select t stats from the stat menu, and then one sample since we only have one sample of data, right? We don't have the actual commute times of the 22 individuals in our sample, but we do have the summary. So we're going to select with summary. Okay, and then we're going to enter the information that we were given in the problem. So the sample we was 32.4. The standard deviation was 7.2, sample size was uh, 22 people. Okay, and we're going to select the second button for confidence interval for the population mean. Okay, and the confidence level as a decimal is 0.8. Okay, so confidence levels are usually expressed as percentages. So if it's given to you as a percentage, as it is in this problem, right, 80%, right, you can simply take 80% and divide by two or divide by 100. Okay, to convert it into a decimal. Or simply move the decimal point two places to to the left to convert it into a decimal. So you can input the decimal into its stack range. Okay, so 0 0.80 is our confidence level. And we can choose to do a, a plot of the confidence interval. Okay, that's that's optional. You don't have to do that. Okay, so when we click compute. That's going to tell us okay what the confidence interval is. So it's it's a confidence interval for the population mean. Okay, it tells you the sample mean. Okay, the standard error of the mean. Okay, the degrees of freedom, which is uh, the sample size minus one. Okay, then the lower limit and the upper limit. So that, that's what we're looking for specifically to answer the question. Okay, so the confidence interval for the population mean is blank and blank. So this is where you put the lower and upper limits of your interval. Okay, we want to round those to one decimal place. So it would be 30.36 or 30.4, and then 34.4. So 30.4 and 34.4 are the lower and upper limits respectively. Round it to one decimal place. Okay, remember these have units, right? So the units of the sample mean were in minutes, so therefore the units of the lower limit and the upper limit are also in minutes. Okay, so then the margin of error, okay, we can look that up. Okay, so I don't see the margin of error listed here. It does give you the standard error, which is not the same thing. So standard error should not be confused with the margin of error. Okay, but remember we calculated it earlier, okay, in an earlier example. Okay, so now that we have the confidence interval, right, the standard error or the margin of error rather would just be the, the lower the upper limit minus the lower limit. Okay, divided by two. Okay, so the, the difference there is four. Okay, so uh, it would be two. Let's see if that works. Okay, good. And then it wants us to interpret the results. Really quickly, um, every interpretation for a confidence interval contains three things. Okay, um, the confidence level, uh, the parameter that we're estimating, which is the mean commute time to work for the entire population, and then the confidence interval limits. So you want to write that as a complete sentence. So as a complete sentence, the interpretation is we are 80% confident that the mean commute time to work for the entire population is between 30.4 30 minutes and 34.4 minutes. So we're going to select that as our answer. 
Uh, but unfortunately, I lost the assignment. But th this is what the answer was.